Alright, this is Big Boss from Foxtown Woodsball coming to you from Fort Lauderdale and for this video it's going to be a bit of a gear review day for me. So, with Rap4 transitioning over into MCS, which is Modern Combat Sports or Modern Combat Solutions, a lot of their kits going now on major blowout sales, 50, 60, 70% off and like any budget baller who's got a little money lying around or got a little bit of play money, I decided, fuck it. I'm buying some new kit. I'm going to try it out, see what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and that's how we got here. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing their Rap4 Fusion BDUs. As you can see, I bought it in the Vietnam Tiger Stripe pattern. For you guys that know me personally, I am a big fan of the Vietnam Tiger Stripe pattern. I find it to be very effective in wood environments, jungle environments, tropical, subtropical. It's an all-around great pattern. It's also got a lot of historical significance and is one of those patterns that refuses to go away quietly, if you know what I mean. Now, the Fusion BDUs are cut a lot like the Army's ACUs, but I'll get into more on that later on in this video. As you can see what I have lying out here, I've got a couple pouches and one setup already hooked up to my gear rig. I'm going to be going through that bit by bit. But first, a word from our sponsors. magazine pouch. As you can see, it's got a lot of molly on the back, the back so that way you can weave it into a tack vest. Now, with this particular pouch setup, you also have a little bit of play back here with an adjustable magazine flap. As you can see, it's velcroed on so that way it adds some Security, stability, as you can see right here. Nice Velcro, strong, sturdy, reliable. And these can hold T68 magazine. Now, it's a little tight to get in, so. Magazine in, flap down, ready to go. I bought these originally thinking that these could hold two of them, but as you can see, trying to slide a second T68 magazine in here is not going to work. I've tried the back way, trying the front way. There's no chance in hell I can do it. So. I'm expecting my Tiger Stripe shingles to come in pretty soon. That's going to be up for review in a part two for this, so I'll get back to you on that. However, these pouches are pretty good. They're pretty serviceable. And for all you guys that are hopper players, there is a saving grace behind these. Got a basic 100 round paint call pod. Now these can also fit round paintball pods in here without a problem and because the strap on here is adjustable 
Let me get this thing adjusted real fast. Um, sorry for the delay. As I was saying, because this couch has an adjustable flap, you could easily trick this thing out to fit a 100 round paintball pod in here and go from a mag fed to a hopper fed setup. So I'll definitely give this thing points for its versatility as far as going between hopper and magazine fed. However, I will ding it for not being able to carry more than one magazine in each pouch. So I'd say it works pretty well for my purposes. And now let's move on. Okay, now we're back, and as you can see, I got a wrapped for 40 millimeter grenade pouch here. This is designed to hold two 40 millimeter grenades for your M203 grenade launcher, or whatever 40 millimeter grenade launcher that tickles your fancy. Now, as you can see, this is one of the few pouches I have in a woodland camouflage pattern. It seems fairly big, fairly intimidating, but as you can see, Open these pouches up. Now the shells I've got right here are made by S Thunder. These shells have served me very well over the years. Unlike most 40 millimeter shells on the market, you can change the course so that way you don't have to keep buying a new shell every time you need to grenade launch or you can just replace the cores. Now I'll leave a link in the description to this video for S Thunder. You could Check them out. I also reviewed these years ago, so if you want to see that video, I'll be more than happy to post the link to my S Thunder review videos. Now, getting back to the grenade shell pouch, I got several forms of the S Thunder shells right here. These two are the most fairly standard that I work with. These are able to fit the 203 without a problem. This bigger one. It's designed to go for the grenade pistol. Also 40 millimeter, but the shell is too long to put inside the 203. If there's one thing I like about these, these things fit fairly snugly and securely. But if there's one thing that I'm willing to ding wrap four on, it's the flaps for these things. As you can see, got the shell in. Got the flaps down. Now, these things are supposed to hold very secure. The strap's supposed to go over it, hold it tight. But as you can see, it's like there's a lot of play in here. I assume it's for a more specialized shell or to keep it like this so that way you can get it out real fast. Though it sinks down even deeper into the pouch, so. I'm not sure if that's a slight defect or if that's the way it was designed. I will say, Grab 4 really needs to make these flaps more adjustable. Because these flaps are actually stitched in here. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. My mistake. These things are actually adjustable to begin with, so... I'd like to apologize for that one. This is my first time actually going through this in great detail. So I'm learning as you're watching. So these flaps are adjustable. Though I wish they'd be a little more adjustable. Have some more Velcro on them. So that way it can fit a wide variety of shells. Now, I can't ding wrap four for this one now because I just discovered this. So. Got these in. Okay. These things can definitely be adjusted perfectly for your shells. So, if the guys at Rap4 are watching this, I'd like to apologize for the misunderstanding with that one. But, now I know that I cannot ding them for this particular item. These things will work great with 
any remaining trail you have. As you can see, pulling up the flap, I could adjust this thing further to accommodate even the biggest shell in my arsenal. So, with that being said, these things are pretty ideal for just about anything, though this one, I may just throw in the gun and leave it at that. Okay. Now you see the grenade launcher shell sound? Well, the pouch form I'm working with. Moving on. Okay. Now we're back, and what I've got here is the Wrap 4 Large Canteen Pouch. This is in a Vietnam Tiger Stripe pattern. Now, this is an upscaled model of one I reviewed in a prior video, so the dimensions for what they would call the small canteen pouch, I mean the small tank pouch, is just your basic GI modular canteen pouch that could be versatile enough for a small air tank. So, as you can see with this particular pouch, same type of system, same pocket, same drawstring, it's just larger, and you still got a lot of modeling on here for all your modular needs. You can put this on battle belts, you can put this on a basic GI pistol belt. Now, holding a tank in here is what it was intended for. As you can see, I got my 24 ounce compressed air tank. But first, with this flap. Best idea with this is to feed it out of the flap here. And give me one second. This is a little stuck here. Okay, got that. You can see, tuck it in, tank in these two straps, just place over here. And because this is a cinch strap on a quick release buckle, this thing allows it to be very versatile, not just for canteens, but also to allow you to securely hold your air tank if and when you're running a remote line or you want an extra backup tank. As you can see, hold strong. It's not going anywhere. This is great for a vertical setup. But there is actually a lot more that you can do with this particular pouch. As I said, this is uh, not just the tank pouch, but it can also be a large utility pouch. Just like with the GI One Quart Canteen Molly pouch, it's flexible and adaptable enough with the elastic on the side, so that way you could put other things in, like. MREs, canteens. So, to show its further versatility, put this thing back in. I've got right here four T68 magazines. I use these on my MK7 setup. So, for this thing as a improvised magazine pouch, you can actually fit all four of these in here without a problem. You could tighten these up if you have to. And this practically turns your large utility pouch into a fast rapid deployment magazine pouch. So if you're using this for a mag pouch, this would be fairly good to work with. As you can see, four mags, easy to fit. Got one more piece to pop in here, show you what you can do with it. So, give me one moment. Okay, again back to the tank pouch. For as versatile as this thing is, with the being able to put magazines in, put an air tank in, 
because this can also double for a utility count. This can also double for a mag count. So, for all my hopper fed friends out there, two 100 round pods. Just slide these things right in here. As you can see, because of how deep this pouch is, it provides a very secure fit for them, meaning your paint is going to be very well protected against the elements. And you can just throw this onto a belt, vest, and have a good pod pack if you want to run with something that's a little unconventional but still quite effective. For all my hopper fed friends that like to fancy themselves as machine gunners for their teams, for a pouch like this, if you're rolling a 450 round hopper on your gun, you won't always carry a lot of paint. I got here a bag of generic paintballs. I don't remember what brand they were, but this is 500 paintballs right here. And as you can see, you can easily stuff the entire bag right into this town. And it can be used kind of like a saw pouch for all you guys that may have handled the 249 or the M240 in the military. As you can see, it's fitted, everything's secure, nothing's going in, nothing's coming out. You've got an entire pouch filled with 500 paintballs right here, ready to go. So, if you're running low on paint in the firefight, just open this up, pull this thing out. And you're good to go. As a general purpose utility pouch, I got one of these basic pouches here that it's usually a toiletry bag, a travel bag, but for my experiences and my needs, it serves as my maintenance bag. Got some basic tools, goggle maintenance, extra barrel blocking devices, stuff like that. If you're on the go or you want to be as light as you can, just take this pouch. Well, take the little bag, throw it right in the pouch. Good to go. So, there's a million and one different things you can use this particular pouch for, not just what was originally intended for. So, with that, we'll be moving on. Okay, next item on the docket is the Wrap 4 Modular Horizontal Tank Pouch. I got this one in a woodland camo pattern. I'm using it on a modular medic vest, the LBV 88 variant, to be more accurate. Now, this pouch is a very interesting concept because you've got this line of snaps here that allows you to hook it into a molly belt or a molly vest. As you can see, like here, it's got the loops and everything, so you can actually fit it onto a vest. Me personally, I loop this into the back of my tack vest so that way I can have a horizontal tank here, and that in turn frees up the back panel of this vest and the pistol belt underneath so that way I could run a butt pack if I feel the need or I could run a hydration system or whatever the case may be for my particular mission parameters or what I'm doing on the field for that particular event. Now, again, I'm pulling out the largest tank in my inventory which is a 24 ounce compressed air tank and as you can see you can set this up for left or right handed use I'm running this as a left hand on the tank because I'm a left handed shooter all you need to do is just cinch it down this thing ties it into place and this 
got the quick release buckle right here. So that way you can just hook this in. It's nice and secure. This thing will not go anywhere. As you can see. Now, for a, give me one second as I do a fast demo on this one. Alright, now I apologize for the lighting conditions right now, but this is the best I can do for circumstances. As you can see, I've got my gear on. I've got the MK7 marker out. As you can see, change out my tack light. New batteries for the light and the laser. But the cool thing is, I've got the remote line rigged up to this tank on the back. So, as you can see, this thing ain't going anywhere. I could jump around, move around with it, still able to get my marker shouldered. And because of the stock, still able to whip my gun around in the event that I need to. Plus, because I have the line up here, it's not going to get snagged on anything. That's the beauty of having your tank mounted high up like this. Plus, you're also able to access it a little easier. Turn it on, turn it off. But it takes a little bit of practice to get used to that one. In the general context... I find this setup to be pretty superb. I like how Rapfor thought this one out. The only thing I'm condemning this one for is lack of versatility. And what I mean by versatility, because I have this mounted on a place that would be better serviced with Alice clips, I feel that this pouch would be great with the addition of LC2 Alice clips as an additional means to secure it, or if you're running it on an old-style Alice pistol belt, like what I have here on my vest. Other than that, we're going to move on into the fatigue, so we'll be right back in a minute. Okay, now, for the final part of this review, while well, I'm going to be looking at the Wrapped for Fusion BDUs. Now, as a comparison piece, I've also got out my older Tiger Stripe BDUs. These particular BDUs were made by guys at True Spec. I will say, True Spec makes a very good commercial grade BDU for the cost. But for this particular video, we're going to be discussing the pros and compare and contrast each particular BDU set for a comparison just for shits and giggles. So, the true spec ones, this is your basic BDU style. The four pockets, the pants are the same BDU style with two back pockets, two front pockets, two side pockets. Now, with the RAV4 Fusion BDUs, these were fairly well modeled after the military, or well actually the U.S. Army's ACU cut, but with a few minor differences in them aside from the camo pattern. One note is that the Velcro patch right here where a rank insignia would go is a little too high and the Army one would be more down here. Now, I like how they have the name tape patches. That way you can put your name tapes on it and things like that. Another cool feature is that it's got the pen pocket, but I rarely use that one. With the jacket, you also have an elbow area, a place where you could actually put in padding if you so desired right over here it's got this nice velcro pocket as you can see easily stick my hand in here 
can put elbow pads, you can use this as an additional accessory pocket if you gotta do. The cuff straps here are fairly short, but the good thing about these is that they do allow you to make it tighter on your wrist if you need to. The slanted chest pockets are pretty good too. It allows you to have the basic as far as a DBU pocket, but it's slanted to allow for easier access to any materials you have in the pocket. Because of, there are no bottom pockets on this particular jacket, it allows you to tuck this shirt in to be an assault shirt if you're doing anything dynamic, close quarters, or you just like to have something a little more tactical without everything being untucked and loose and everything. Now, the interesting thing is about the shirt is the pat is the way it closes. Now, the BDU pattern we all know it's got the four buttons here and the fifth one at the top. But for this particular one, it's got a mandarin collar on it. And the buttons for this, you've got the same four buttons to button this up, plus the mandarin collar. This is a nice idea, though with the design of the Fusion BDU jacket, I'm not sure whether to call this thing a hybrid of the old and new version, or call it a bastardization. But, to each his own, I actually like the setup they have for it. I just wish they also had a zipper variant. Now, moving on to the BDU pants. But first, almost forgot something, so if there's one thing that I like about the true spec stuff, it's that the true spec stuff is pretty consistent. You can see how they have the stripes going the same way as the rest of the jacket. The wrap for one, I'm willing to ding a little bit for the fact that as you can see with this particular jacket, the stripes here. These things are actually canted toward the side. If you can see pretty closely, but let me bring this up a little more. As you can see, look at the BDU pocket and everything, how these are all vertical, how these are slanted on the pocket, and the flap for this pocket is almost entirely vertical, so I'm not sure if that's a good like variation to camouflage or if it was a mistake in manufacturing. That's probably one of the only things I'm going to ding wrap four on as far as the design of their BDU jacket, though I will say that with the jacket as far as that's going, the body armor friendly pocket placement and the pockets here, great for unit insignias, stuff like that, and is more or less a very true inspiration to the Army's ACU cut, as well as the True Spec Tactical Response Uniform. Now, moving on to the pants. We all know the basic BDU loadout, I mean BDU setup for the pants. Now. The wrap four pants are also directly modeled after the Army ACU cut and the True Spec Tactical Response uniform. You got the bottom leg pocket right here, great for just about anything you could put in it. The large cargo pockets on these pants, also Velcro opening with that little elastic zip tie. These are great if you're having to store extra equipment. There's, unlike the true spec tactical response uniform pants, there is no little pocket on the inside of the legs. But that's not too bad, all things considering. I will say that there is a slight, I will ding these too a bit, particularly with the pocket flap right here, how everything is going 
horizontally. The stripes on the flap is going vertically. It's on both sides. Now I'm turning over to the back or the seat of the pants. I've also got this particular setup. Now, give me one second as I pull out the true spec ones. Now, true spec pants are practically the same as the rest of the BDU styles. Don't mind the condition of the true spec BDUs. I've worn these for a great many years. I've played many games in these, so these things have seen quite a fair bit of use. Now, the seat for the true spec BDU pants, as you can see, it's the pattern is relatively consistent still in the seat area. The wrap four one is somewhat similar, except that the angle is more extreme. Here's a nice little comparison, if you could see. You got the pants part here, here's the extra little padding for the seat. The stripes, as I said, are horizontal, but the stripes on the reinforcement for the seat is canted to an angle almost entirely I would say like a 45 degree at least but I will say these are still pretty versatile very comfortable I'm actually wearing a pair right now so in regards to these I will say that this uniform is fairly unique fairly durable and serviceable now, the materials for both of them are somewhat different. This seat, the truth, I mean the RAV4 version is a little bit of, uh, not sure if it could be 100% cotton or cotton nylon blend, but the true spec one is a bone twill material. However, both are designed to be used in fairly decent conditions as far as high heat, humidities, and stuff like that, and both are designed to give uh, wear years of good wear, tear, and practically all around abuse. Now, with that, I'll be right back for my final thoughts. Okay, now, with everything I've said about RAV4, I know there's still a lot of critics about them. They had a the little bit of an uneasy reputation for their markers and some of their stuff, which gave them the brand of crap for, quote-unquote. But from the gear that I've seen... I knew through many circles that RAV4 had a very solid reputation for their soft goods department and wearing their BDUs, trying some of their products out from a friend of mine that was a dealer, I can happily say that I like rap 4 soft goods. Now all this stuff's going on blowout and for somebody like me. Now it's prime time to get what gear I can and what patterns I can because they're being discontinued. You can still find some of this stuff on eBay, but it's hard as hell to find it. And depending upon where it is, the prices could be a little extreme in terms of certain things. But with that being said, I will say about Rap 4 that... They have a good edge in this industry. I've seen companies like Balkan turn out Tiger Stripe stuff that's like paintball geared specifically, but I would definitely say Rap4 has a great edge, not just with paintball players, but with both airsoft and real steel active shooters. They're producing the military gear 
in various patterns that none of the other surplus retailers like True Spec or Eagle, Blackhawk are, are producing. And for that, I have to give it to Rap4 on it. They produce some good stuff in many different patterns that many new players might scoff at as being old or obsolete, but for somebody who likes classics, I've got to give them the utmost respect for it because for a company like Rap4 who's had its ups and downs and is going to do the transition to become modern combat solutions or modern combat sports, they definitely do an excellent job at making their gear as realistic or as close to genuine military issue as possible with certain liberties on tank size and stuff like that. I will say it's a shame that they're getting rid of all their, a lot of their soft goods and clearing out for the new stuff, but I will say that's my greatest wish if they at some point would reintroduce a lot of these patterns, particularly the Tiger Stripes and a few others, but that's just my opinion. On a personal note with True Spec, I will say that they should be making a Tiger Stripe Tactical Response Uniform. They've already got it in Woodland, ACUs, Desert. Those are fine, but I know there are some shooters who like the ACU cut, but would like it in Tiger Stripe format or a Desert Tiger because they've already got their multi-terrain Tiger Stripe, which I will say is a cool pattern by the way. But that's just me. If you want a written version of this, you can check it out at outerheavenpaintball.blogspot.com. I will be posting a link in the description to this video. and. With that, this is Big Boss, and I'm out of here.